everybody, welcome to another video series brought to you by Pro Media Training. Today we're going to take a look at using Pro Tools keyboard shortcuts so that way you can save time on editing. My name is Mihai, and with me today as always is DJ Red. Let's go ahead and start taking a look at our session and see what we can do and how much time we can save by actually using these keyboard shortcuts. Now keep in mind, we're going to talk about command focus at the same time, and just remember that this applies to all systems, whether it's Mac or PC, the same shortcuts apply on the keyboard. All right, so here we are in our session. One of the easiest things to just talk about right off the bat is play and stop. Normally, you can always look at the transport window and use the play stop commands here, but it's just so much easier to use the space bar. Or if you have a numeric keypad, the number zero is also play and stop. This eliminates the need to have to have this transport window open all the time because everything that's here you can actually do from a keyboard shortcut. All right, so the number zero is play and stop. The number one on the numeric keypad is rewind, just like pressing the rewind button. The number two on the numeric keypad is fast forward. And number three on the numeric keypad is record. Now it's record such as hitting the record enable button and play. You have to have a track record enabled. So it does that all in one function. We can just go ahead and just keep this guy closed and we don't really need to see him since we now can just kind of navigate real quickly using keyboard shortcuts. Another really important kind of feature of Pro Tools um, before we even get to the editing stages is the ability to switch between the different modes such as shuffle, slip, spot, and grid. And each one of these modes affects how you actually edit where your cursor gets placed, how the audio regions react. But nonetheless, instead of having to use the mouse to click between the different modes, you can use a keyboard shortcut, which are the function keys. Now F1 is shuffle, F2 is slip, F3 is spot, and F4 is grid. All right, now that we've talked about how to switch between modes really quickly, you're also going to need to be able to switch between tools pretty quickly. So once again, instead of using the mouse, you can go ahead and use some keyboard shortcuts. In this case, we're just going to follow the function keys down, starting with F5 and going through F10. And that's going to activate with F5 the zoom tool. F6 is the trim tool. F7 is the selector tool. F8 is the grabber tool, F9 is the scrub tool, and F10 is the pencil tool. And because we have a multi-tool that is made up of the trim tool, the selector tool, and the grabber tool, you can activate this smart tool feature by pressing F6, 7, and 8 simultaneously. Now that we have tool selection and mode selection out of the way, Let's take a look at some keyboard shortcuts revolving around editing of audio. And just keep in mind that there's actually two entirely different sets of keyboard shortcuts going on at once in Pro Tools. There's the normal shortcuts that involve a command key or a control key on a PC or an alt or option key. But then there's also something called command focus. You'll notice here in the edit window, there's this tiny A to Z box. This actually lives in three different places. It lives here in the playlist area. It lives here in the clips bin. And it also lives here in the groups list. It's always active. It just depends which area it's active on. And you can tell which one is active by which one is highlighted. Now for what we're going to do, we want to make sure that the playlist area in the edit window is the one that's actively command focused. So with command focus active, let's go ahead and start editing some of the parts of this session right now. Let's take a look at this track right here. Notice how, like a lot of these tracks, there is a lot of just dead space in the recording before audio actually kicks in. A lot of times what you would do is click, select, and then hit delete to remove that. Now that works, but there's also quicker ways to do this. In this case, since we want to speed this up, we're going to use the letter A on the keyboard. Watch what this does. This is a function known as trim start to insertion. It's going to trim out everything from the beginning of the audio region to wherever the insertion point is. Also, you can do the same exact thing on the back end. Let's say I wanted to cut everything from my insertion point to the end of the region over here. You can hit the letter S on the keyboard. 
Now in this case, like a lot of cases, you have parts within the audio region in the middle that you want to trim out. So we're going to throw in another keyboard shortcut in this case, which is the letter B. What the letter B does is allows you to separate your audio region at your insertion point. So when I hit the letter B, just created a separation right there. So now I can come right here and say letter A, because it's going to trim from the beginning of that region that we just created by separating it. We can do the same thing over here. Letter B to separate. Come over here to the beginning, letter A, and we're done. Using these commands that we just talked about, let's take a look at how quickly and easily it is to trim out some of these regions and clean up some of this audio that we have here. how quickly that went and how easily it all kind of seamlessly blended together. Here's another couple of things that you can do to make editing a little bit easier. Let's say that you have a selection like you do now and you want to zoom in on the selection so that way you can possibly do some fade ins and fade outs. If you just hit the letter E, this will blow up the selection and fit it to the window. Notice now everything's kind of gone big. We can hit the letter E again and have it go back down to normal size. And this is just a quick way to zoom in and zoom out. Now, once we're zoomed in, let's say we wanted to do a fade in on this audio region. Well, since we're in command focus, all we need to do is use the letter D, and what that does is it creates a fade in from the beginning of the region to the insertion point. Same concept if you want to do a fade out at the end of the region. You just select where you want your fade out to start, and then hit the letter G to do a fade out to the end of the region. I hope that you can see the benefit of using some of these keyboard shortcuts as it will just speed up the whole process of editing and get through this whole cycle to let you get on to the more creative stuff such as mixing and, and other music production. But just keep in mind that there's a ton of keyboard shortcuts. There's a lot of things that we're not going to cover right now and there's a lot of things that don't actually make sense. Like for instance, if you don't ever need to capture incoming time code, no real reason to sit here and cover the keyboard shortcuts to capture incoming time code. But enjoy yourselves, have a little fun, keep on making some music. See you soon.